She lived in New Zealand, the birthplace of R, for 15 years. So please, everyone, welcome Gwyn to the stage. Hi. Can you see me, Jared? Now I can. Oh, perfect. OK. So hi, I'm uh, Gwen Sturdivant. I'm a postdoc at uh, Laboratory for Innovation Science at Harvard Business School. And I'm so excited to have you here at my talk and to listen to all the other talks at this conference. What a great thing. And thank you, Jared, and everyone else for putting this together. I know how much work it involves. So let's get started. And we're going to talk about faster coding or vectorizing computations in R. I did a little bit of a talk about this at USR 2020, and um, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the details, but basically I had a sample. I was going to use a bootstrap to estimate the population mean. And so I wrote some tidyverse coding, and it was taking forever to run. So what I decided to do you know, was I thought, well, I'll just you know, write some vectorized coding. You know, I'll see if it runs a little bit quicker. And uh, in fact, it did. It ran much quicker. So um, here you can see how much quicker, in fact, it ran. So this is the tidy coding. It took you know, a lot longer, sometimes about nine, 10 times longer. And so I thought, oh my goodness, I, I didn't realize that. I was really surprised that the tidy coding took, took so much longer. And I was you know, thinking, oh, you know, vectorizing is a really good thing. And of course, we'll talk a little bit more about what vectorizing is, but I want to get back to this slide just a little bit, because I, I think that there's an important point about some of the really basic differences in tidyverse coding and in um, vectorized coding, or you know, some people, um, it's, it's basically written in base R. So um, if you look at this vectorized coding, or let me just start with the tidyverse, because I think probably m more people are familiar with this. So tidyverse coding, you read from top to bottom, right? So we have this, we take the, the sample, or you know, I change it to a data frame, I take the sample, I pull the splits, and then I take column mean. So it's kind of, you know, you read it like you read English. Whereas vectorized coding, or um, which you know is in base R, first you take the sample, so it's kind of, you know, it grows from out to in. You take the sample, and then I'm replicating the sample n times, and then I take the column means. So that is, this is much more familiar in you know, in algebra. In algebra, when we come, you know, when we do a composition of functions, we go from out to in and it gets bigger, right? You know, it gets, it goes like that. So I just wanted to point that out briefly here at, at, at this slide and because we're going to see it again. Okay, so when to vectorize. Now, I really like vectorizing functions. It's kind of, you know, one of the things that I think about first is how we're going to get the code to run fast. But, um, you know, don't be like me. Don't spend forever. <laughs> don't spend forever uh, vectorizing your your coding. And this is just a, a a simple thing. It says if you do it five times a day and it takes one second over five years, you're going to save two hours. So you know, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when you um, when you uh, are thinking about vectorizing functions and how how you want to work on it. So um, right and. What I'm going to talk about today, um, this is a, um, a tweet from Elon Musk where he was a little grumpy. He, he, had, um, he took four COVID rapid antigen tests and on one day, two came out negative and two came out positive. And so what happened in, in, with that test is that that COVID test trades um, speed for accuracy, right? So it's quick, but it's it's not as accurate. And there's other things that aren't accurate as well. For example, blood pressure, your blood pressure measurement, it varies all the time, um, your cholesterol levels, and also, um, what's the third one? Um, cholesterol, oh, it's fasting, fasting blood gl glucose, which is um, used to diagnose um, diabetes. So these things vary a lot. And so there's a lot of noisy measurements just you know, in, in inherent biological data. And so I'm going to put uh, some, you know, a complicated equation on the side. Say, for example, that we only have a really noisy measurement. Um, what we want, what we will do, and we and we're want to study time to event, will, you know, which is survival analysis, we'll have this really horrible discrete survival analysis uh, formula here. And then we'll have this, uh, we could have this gamma I and delta I TI which are, you know, to take into account sensitivity and specificity, right? So this, this is a, the specificity measurement, this is a sensitivity measurement, and um, 
you know, why we would be closing the derivative, coding the derivative. I mean, I guess the parameter that we're probably interested in is beta. Is is the is the treatment better than the control? To, you know, which arm does better? Um, right. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. And you might want to vectorize. You might want to code the derivative because it it can help some things to run a little bit faster. So, um, right. That's really icky. It's really, really a horrible equation. And so the first thing that that I'm going to tell you to do when you code something like that in R is to simplify it as much as you possibly can. Um, and so if we look at this coding, we can see that there is a number of um, you know repetitions. We have this one plus e to the gamma naught j to the negative um, e to the e x um, sorry, X transpose, the XI transpose beta, okay? So we see that repeated a number of times. And so if I wanted to simplify this function, I could make this substitution. And if you look carefully, you'll see that, oh, look, this is one minus this, um, we call this the hazard risk function right here. So it's one minus that. So, right, so if I wanted to simplify this function even further, what I can do is make it like this so it's much easier to deal with okay so now we've kind of simplified it now the next step that i recommend doing and you must do if you're ever going to code something horrible in r is to get a lot of clarity on what's what's happening in that function right so exactly what's happening so let's look at this again and let's take an example you know t so so in this case we have ti but we also have um, ti observed there's two different values and the reason for that is because it's it, there's a lot of noise, there's mismeasurement. So let's just look at this first part because that's the simple part. And I have this J goes from, it's a product, this um, capital pi means product. And so this J goes from one to five. So I have the hazard risk function evaluated at um, XI for, for person I, uh, at uh, gamma naught J beta, right? And so the only thing that changes is is the j so i'm gonna have this function evaluated at gamma naught one and then at two i'm gonna multiply them all together right so this is what i have in that first part not very pretty you know not very pretty you can see why they did this but um but it's there so let's look at this one here this next part so this next part's a bit a little bit icky um and um so let's just take one value of k so if k is one then this whole thing j will go from one to zero this goes away and i'm just left with um the complement of the hazard risk function evaluated at gamma naught uh, one times delta i one right so that's all i have now let's go back and um if i do this at two what happens well i end up with uh j goes from one to one so i'll have the hazard risk function evaluated at gamma naught one times the complement of the hazard risk fraction of evaluated at because k is two now at gamma naught two times delta so you can see the pattern right so i'm i just add this and then if it's three i'm gonna have uh this evaluated at gamma naught two and i just want to apologize for going through a lot of ugly math but i i think the the coding is you know it, it's really important for you to understand this little bit of coding, and even though it's not the derivative, so that you can understand um, the rest, how I'm vectorizing it. So here I have three gamma naught one and gamma naught two, and then I multiply by the complement and about, you know, and, and multiply by uh, capital delta I three and so on, right? So that's, that's what happens. Okay, so before I'm gonna, I, I go into vectorizing this whole thing. I want to talk a little bit about these much kind of simpler functions, this capital gamma I and these delta, delta I, you know, K or whatever. So, oh, excuse me. Before I do that, let's talk about the derivative of this function. I, I forgot about this. So let's, um, let's look here. So I, this is not a derivative taking class. I'm not going to go through the whole der derivation of this, but I do want to talk a little bit about if I'm going to take the derivative of this thing, with respect to one of these gamma knots, uh, whatever, L, that um, everything else is kept constant, right? So that's the way that we do this. This is the product of all of these ones that don't include L, and then I have the derivative um, with respect to gamma naught L for, of this hazard risk function. I just multiply it at the end. Okay, 
So now I'm going to talk about what I talked about earlier is, is um, uh, doing the coding this and these things, because I think that's, um, that's a good, so uh, a good place to start. So in, in terms of vectorizing, so indexing is something that we talk about in R and, and, you know, for loops is one way to do it. There's other ways to do it. I'm going to introduce you to a new way to index. Um, or perhaps you've seen it before, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to a, a, a new, another way to index in R. So we have this equation here. So this is the same equation that we saw, uh, you know, in the, in the slide, an earlier slide. And what I'm going to talk about is how to find this. So what I want to do is I mul want to multiply, uh, let's just see, I have, I have an example here. I want to multiply these phi i's. So if I have um, these t, t, t observed or t i observed, it will is two, then I'm going to be multiplying just this number here, right? So if I'm if I'm looking at that, I just want to multiply these, which means, you know, if I'm going to multiply, perhaps I want to multiply across and, and that's a good way to do it. The rest of these need to be one, right? So let's see, I have this one is five and I'm just going to talk about this. So I go from one to four. So that means I'm going to multiply all of these. And then this one, which is one, will be one. And then if this is one, then this goes from one to zero. So it goes away, it becomes one. And so then all of these will need to be one, right? So how can we think about doing that in a way that's really quick and really fast? So let's look here. So here's my T observed, my T I, oh, excuse me. Oosh. So, oh, good. I think it went right back to where I was. Um, but sometimes I touch my mouse and it goes through the slides. So anyway, if 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 we're going through uh, ti of ti, of, ti observed is two, then I have I want to everything all of these in lots of phi that uh, are greater than. So let's let me see. So I just want to multiply this one. I said that before. All of these need to be one, right? And so I can use this lots of i to index and say any of these lots of fees that are bigger, you know, that have where, where, this, where this value is bigger than or equal to, uh, where the index is bigger than or equal to the, to the T I observed, I want them to be one, right? So I just replace. So for example, this one, you know, in fact, this case it is one, right? But for this one here, all of these that are bigger, I use this lots of i to index off of it, and I want to change all of these to one. So in other words, what I'm doing is I'm going to make it look like this, right? So I have my point eight here. All of these are one. This one is also two, so I have a point eight. And um, so how can I do this? Well, it's a it's really simple. It's one line of coding, and here it is here, right? So I have lots of phi. I have lots of i. I say, whatever of these lots of i's are greater than or equal to t0, change them to one, and then I just do this apply and I find this product, and I've found this part, which is the most difficult part. And then this one I can just index off of, uh, use the, t, the ti observed, right? So, so di, this is survival analysis, this, um, so di observed is either zero or one, either event uh, an event occurs or it does not occur, and so one of these will go away, and I'll be left with uh, the last value of phi. And then I've, I've done, you know, the whole thing. I've done that whole thing. So when you look at this coding, you might want to do like 15 for loops, but you don't need to. Please don't. Just keep it simple, okay? Um, and this is part of what I really enjoy about R is thinking about ways to code where, where, you know, things can be vectorized and they can run quicker and they can be optimized. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this other one, which is delta um, delta i t i observed. So here I have the t i observed. I think this is pretty clear how to do how to do this one because I just went over it in the last slide. It's the exact same case. And then let's talk about this one here. So here I have this one minus theta j, and I have t i and I have t i observed. Okay, so let's just look at this. So for this first one. The TI and the T, oh, excuse me. I just did something. There we go. The TI and the TI observed are, um, are the same. So that means that I, um, let's see, what does it mean exactly? 
Yes. So I'll, I'll just be multiplying these and this whole thing was going to go away, right? Because it's going to be from three to two, it doesn't make any sense. And then an event isn't observed. So let's look at this one. So here I'm going to have, this is a little bit more interesting. I have TI is three, and then I have T observed as five and an event occurs at the fifth time point. So here, um, here I have, I'll multiply this times, uh, I'll multiply this twice, right? I'll multiply this two times. I'll multiply, uh, excuse me, um, I, um, phi, phi one times phi two, and then I'll, I want one minus theta, right? So I have phi one times phi two, and then I want one minus for these two. So this is from three, three to uh, four. So I'm going to have 0 0.05 and 0 0.025, right? I'll multiply those. And then this one, I'm just going to tag on at the end like I did before. Okay, so this is a little bit different, but I'm going to try and make this um, this matrix here. And what you see is I have these lots of one minus thetas. And then what I do is I replace some of these with, um, uh, so all of these need to be replaced with one for the first one because they, the, they happen at the same time. And this one I have, I'm gonna replace these two with one and those two with one, right? So this is what I wanna get at, right? And the rest, it's very similar. You can see it's just the pattern that I continue here. So this is the coding that does that. We just have lots of one minus theta and I take the ones that are less than ti and I turn them to one and the ones that are greater than t0, greater than or equal to a t0 and I turn those to one and then I can just find the product. And of course, part one I haven't included here. Okay, let's keep going. So one thing I want to talk to you briefly about then that, that you need to think carefully about when you do this kind of vectorizing coding is the dimensions. And so I'm going to introduce you to this, uh, this function, the outer function. It takes two vectors and it applies a, a function to all the different values of that function. Okay, so um, right. And then we're going to talk a little bit about going from inside to out again. I talked about that earlier, and I told you you'd see it again, and here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first address this, this function here, because I think uh, you know it's the right place to go. And of course, we're going to go from inside to out, and that is here, right? So I'm starting with this, and I also have to put the derivative in. So I can set this seed. I have some gamma, some beta. And I make this x beta, you know, it's very simple. Um, I have the risk, which is, I, and I round it. That's one of the things I like about tidy versus you don't have to round it. It doesn't give you 15 different, different decimal places like base r does. And then here I take this and I find all of these hrs. So all of the hrs are right there, right here, right? Now, what am I going to do with those hrs, right? Um, I'm going to multiply them. Right, so here I found this, it's the exact same coding you've seen before. This is the derivative here. And then I want to apply the product to this and I take off which gamma, right? And I multiply by the derivative. So you might look at this and think, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to write, how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna code it? But you can see that this is, you know, like five tens lines, five ten lines of coding. Okay, so let's keep going. We're almost there. I don't know how many people had Halloween uh, candy shoots in their neighborhood, but we had a Halloween candy shoot in my in my neighborhood, and I, I thought it was a, a very good uh, analogy to a function. So um, anyway, right, so let's keep going. So what I have here is this. Oh, oh my goodness, I tell you. Right I have here is this, and I'm, oh my goodness, let me just go back. Oof. And I have this call come prod. So I'm going to use this to take the product of all of these. And I'm, I don't really have the time to, to talk about uh, all of this in, in a lot of detail. But um, I'm just going to show you the coding. And, um, and then I think I'm going to be done. But, but what I do want to show you about this for loop is that it goes from the, it goes through the number of columns, right? So I've gone through the, the, the smallest dimension that I possibly can, because of course, you know, the data that I showed you only had four or five people involved in the trial, but most likely is going to have many more. Okay, so 
what I do here is I have this, I have the derivative, and then I make this the C, C bind thing here. So I do this column, this uh, cumulative product of, of the columns, that's this. Um, and I take off the gamma and I take off uh, the one that I'm taking the de derivative with and I take off the last one and then I multiply by the derivative and then one minus beta, right? So that's this one, one minus beta here. And um, I replace those with uh, the ones that I'm not interested in, right? From L, L plus one to TI zero. Right, which is which gamma L plus one and T I zero becomes zero. And then I just add them all together. Okay, so I think I'm done. And the take home message is to really avoid for loops and to try to do calculations in big, huge chunks, right? So that's all I have to say. Thank you much, very much for coming to my talk. And I am going to stop sharing now. Great. Thank you very much for your talk. That was excellent. I always love a good vectorization. It really can make dramatic differences in your code and makes it more R-like. So that's always pretty awesome. Okay.